So Pete, it has been um, just a little bit over two years since I was standing here with you when we did our GX build. Yes, yes it has. It made some moves. Made some moves. Made some moves. So I sold the GX um, and I took all the money from that and I dumped it into this truck. Yep. And that paid for a fraction of this truck. It did. This thing's a little <laughs> bit bigger and a little bit more comfortable. A little bit bigger, a little more comfortable, <laughs> a little louder, yeah. fewer seats. Yep. But I'm way more excited about this Exactly. Build. It's pretty cool. Absolutely. Uh, so you want to give us a walk around, kind of tell yeah. me what you did. It's been here a Absolutely. couple months. Let's, yeah, so uh, let's Rob, keep going through it. Rob came to us with uh, basically a 2021 3500 Ram um, with air assist, which is very critical. Um, then we kind of went in and, and figured out what we could fit to this new truck. We've got the new AUV uh, front bumper here with the hoop, um, Baja Designs lights. We've got a big old 16.5 winch in here from Come Up. Um, we went ahead and did uh, AV suspension on this truck as well. Um, the dual sport setup that gave us about three inches of lift. And we did uh, the 17 by eight and a half uh, AV wheels with some true 37s from Nitto as well. So, um, you know, this was kind of a great kind of test bed. We did a little bit of rolling with the punches along the way um, to figure out what could fit and uh, kind of were able to pioneer a couple things along the way including air lockers from rear. So um, that's part of the experience. Yeah, originally we were thinking, we were thinking going the full 40 route, yep. right? We, yes, we were thinking about the full 40. And I, I actually lost sleep over that, no lie, like for real. <laughs> My wife remembers, I was waking up in the middle of the night and I was like, yeah. I don't know what tire size to get. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I'm really happy actually with the 37s. Like I'm, I'm kind of glad that we didn't go with the 40s now yeah. that I'm seeing the truck. It's already so huge. So um, really yeah, it's a monster. It's a monster. Yeah. yeah. And um, just thinking about even having to wrestle one of these if you got to change them or whatever. But it, the 37s are great. Absolutely. Yeah. I think they Absolutely. look plenty beefy enough. And yeah. They fill the fill the truck well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and we got the air lockers in and obviously the gears were a challenge if we were going to go the 40 route, which is another reason why we want 37. Yeah, and AEV is not even really re-gearing their full 40-inch prospectors right now because of that. Cause they have Just a new, so new. A new yeah. rear axle yeah. housing, which yeah. is uh, ring gear is the same size, but you know yeah. they did some fun stuff with the pinion, which made it stronger but less interchangeable. Yeah. So For we now, got, we got yeah. some of what we wanted. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And we got the yeah. lockers in, which is important. But Absolutely. honestly, I think it like it suits the whole. Aesthetic, you know, and aesthetic, the size, it makes it actually a little bit, you know, easier to get in and out of. It's still got a massive amount of ground clearance. Yeah. It's still going to be super capable. <laughs> yeah. You can get into your camper and not need, like, you know, the stairway <laughs> right. to heaven, basically. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. All right, well, let's, uh, why don't you show me what you got going on under the hood, and then we'll keep going. Yeah. So, yeah. for the most part, things are still factory and stock under here. Yeah. A little bit, what do you got going on? Absolutely, yeah. So, we're pretty stock under here, as we mostly want, like, any kind of overland rig, nice and serviceable. But we do have our S-Pod Bantam X. We made up a nice little bracket to hold that, um, keep it kind of removable, and still give us access to the factory uh, fuse box underneath. Um, we've got our camper wiring. We've got... A number of things coming in here. You know, obviously we've got the S-Pod, we have light bar, LP9s, and some other accessories, but keeps it tidy and serviceable and easy to add on to as well. We've got air lockers and compressors coming in to the S-Pod to, to give us some power as well. And when so. we get inside, we'll have to remember to show, but we were actually, we were actually able to wire up the auxiliary switches as well. So I've yeah. got S-Pod control and the uh, factory auxiliary switches for the lighting, which is pretty cool. Dual control, yeah, give you options. Um, we brushed on it earlier, but once you get into a little more detail here, let's talk about what all we got going on here. For sure, yes, yeah, so we got the AV front bumper um, with the hoop. We've got the new AV light clamps here to hold the, uh, the LP9s really nice, gives you a nice mounting solution. Um, these are the pros, so we got high and low on this, which is a nice feature. Um, and then we've got our big old come up, uh, 16.5 winch in here, Factor 55 flat link, um, we do have a new option down here. We have that like intercooler guard from AV that gives you kind of some protection for your approach angle so you're not gonna bash all your expensive bits. Um, but tons of recovery points, parking sensor integration. We've got uh, factory fog lights in here as well. So just kind of that big OEM plus beastly front that everybody likes. 
Awesome, and I guess while we're up front here too, we got this uh, 50 inch, is that an S8? It's an S8, yeah, yeah, S8 from Baja Designs. Um, so kind of a combo bar there. Um, gives you, you probably could have gone a tiny bit wider, but uh, you know, that's plenty of light for, for anything you're gonna need up front with yeah. the LP9s. Very happy with the lighting situation. Absolutely. Okay. All right, sliders. I love these sliders. Absolutely. They're awesome. Yeah, yeah just a clean, good. classic look. Um, these are actually white knuckle sliders that were for a different wheelbase and a different um, year of the Ram. They don't have it for the single cab. We went ahead and took off all of the feet that went back to the frame. Um, we used the same material but made longer legs to reach the frame and move them around to make it work with this regular cab with the air assist, the compressor here. So kind of presented a little bit of a challenge, but it was fun nonetheless. And we've got a full diamond plate, um, kind of tread plate on top. You go ahead and use an ARB jack or high lift on it if you're feeling strong. So, um, but yeah, nice and clean. All right, so the uh, tray here is a Norweld uh, Weekender Deluxe. Correct. Right? Yep. And you guys did something a little different here for me. Absolutely. So I did not have the aluminum finish. So for sure. Talk about what we have. Yeah, so we went ahead and had this whole tray powder coated. So we disassembled everything. We took the drawer out. There's an integrated uh, water tank in between the frame rails as well. We removed all that. We broke down all the boxes, the, the lids, the latches, the, t the tunnel box and spare set up here and send it to powder. So the tray has been 100% powder coated in this nice finish, which gives it that nice kind of blend in base for the camper. So it's not as much of like a, an afterthought. It really ties in with the whole build and, and the black and gray theme. Um, this is an eight foot tray on an eight foot frame truck um, with this tunnel box up here. And we can accommodate kind of that shorter flatbed camper and get the best of both worlds. So on the eight foot tray, we have a pretty impressive front storage box. Um, pretty monstrous. You can fit a ton of gear in here, including your uh, lithium chainsaw, which is pretty awesome. Um, so you've got plenty of storage. You can fit a like even a full set of stairs or anything in there. Um, these are fully uh, kind of waterproof. We've got a nice gutter system with, uh, with a gasket here. So it's no option to kind of drip in, which is really nice. And some, some high-end latches that are lockable and adjustable as well. Um, these boxes are mounted to a track system. So depending on your wheel and tire size, we can actually spread them out um, forward or back to accommodate 37s, 40s, 35s, and kind of make it look nice and proportional. Um, get a nice box in the rear. Again, some good storage, waterproof, same gutter system. Um, a nice, again, fully powder coated with that latch. Um, and that is that setup. We have separate fenders here that again, mount to that track system so we can kind of spread them as, as needed. Um, we got a cool stirrup step as well yes. for getting to the camper. So this kind of clips on here when you need it. Again, fully powder coated, kind of tie in with everything. Um, a little bit of a leap, but nice for that quick hop in, you know, in a tight parking spot where you can't put out four feet of stairs. So when I, when I can no longer climb and using a stirrup step, I know it's probably time to hang yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just get some, you know, some platform shoes or something. Right. <laughs> um, but around back of the tray here, we have parking sensors, fully integrated as OEM. Um, we have. Yeah, um, pull this down here. This is one of my favorite features on this entire build. Yeah. That is super cool. And it has so much storage in it. So we got a nice, um, I believe this is about a four foot drawer here. Um, so this is fully encased in its own aluminum case that it slides into. We've got heavy duty slides so we can put several hundred pounds in it. Um, lockable, dust proof, waterproof so you can keep your expensive sensitive stuff that might fit in here, um, you know, nice and tidy and it's easy to get to. How wide do you think this is? Is this like uh, two, three feet? Yeah, know. probably closer to like three, two and a half, three feet. So, yeah. you know, we have customers that use it for, um, you know, hunting gear, some rifles, you know, all kinds of fun stuff that you can keep fully secure and locked up and have some peace of mind with as well. Um, and then we have PJM reverse lights uh, integrated into the tray as well. Um, we've got the, the kind of iconic Norweld um, tail lights for a brake stop and turn uh, as well as running. Those uh, suckers are super bright too. They are, yeah. They kind of give it that nice, uh, that nice classic normal look as well. Uh, this is a 30 gallon um, uh, spare replacement tank. So we take the spare out and it hangs in that same location. 
Um, this was kind of mostly designed for like up to the 18 model, but you can fit it right in. It's a nice feature. You can just bolt it right in like you could in the old ones. Um, tons of range now. It's yeah, awesome. So that's so, an extra 30 gallons, and I think. 30 gallons. I don't know what the what the truck was. Maybe 28. That's I think. at least so, yeah, yeah, probably in the 30s, I'd say. But yeah, so, tons, yeah. tons of range. Um, we also have our trailer uh, set up down here for a four pin and eight pin if you end up having a tow. And so Pete, we got, uh, now does, does this bracket come from four wheel? It does. Okay, yep. so they manufacture the bracket and then they've got the, uh, I think these are just the standard Max Trax mounting pins. Yep. And then you've got your backpack mounts. Yeah, so this is kind of the four wheel back rack option. Um, comes with comes with the Rotopacks um, with, with locking mounts. We've got Max Trax here. Um, and it gives you kind of a nice platform to build off of too. Yeah, so, I'm um, probably going to personally be ditching these because we're diesel. Yeah, and I have enough spare aux tanks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I'll figure out something here. I'll never yeah, really unfortunately for four wheel, it is they only come gas, but you can get the diesel tanks, or you can swap it out for whatever you want to hang up there. Yeah. Um, we have something else pretty cool that's you know extending off the side here. We got our WeBoost antenna, um, which we'll talk a little bit about in a minute, but uh, giving us some more. Yes. Perception and boosting that existing Which signal. I hope to be working out of this more. We hope to spend more time on the road. It's part yeah. of the reason I, we decided to leave off the cliff and do this build because I like to be out longer. But you know, like a lot of people, I got a job, I got to work, yep. I got to make money. Got to connect. So yeah. this kind of gives me a way to stay out longer and you know, in more comfort. Exactly. Yeah. Good. Alrighty. So we've got our uh, four-wheel camper rear floodlights, which are really nice. Um, we can go ahead and pivot them down or up as needed. Um, and just some nice ambient light for if you hear something in the middle of the night or you're, you know, you're trying to set up camp. It's uh, some good features to have. So moving um, around, we got what here? This is our aux tank. Uh, fill, filler. yeah, absolutely. And then, and there's our factory filler. Factory fill. And then actually back here is where our death fluid goes on top of the tank, right? Yeah, it's a nice little uh, hidden feature here. You can still get your, your death um, nozzle in there without too much drama and it's out of the way. Yep. And then we got some more boxes here. Yep. Um, this is just like the box shown on the other side, but you exactly. guys slipped our compressor into this yeah, guy. Yeah, so we've got our compressor, our air twin. You, know, you can kind of see it back here a little bit um, with our manifold and uh, you know um, solenoids for the air locker as well. So that's all set up in our quick connect so we can go ahead and uh, and get you aired up. But yeah, also tons of storage for other goodies awesome as well. Awesome for storing our shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, on this side here, we have the tunnel box as well. That's the other half of that spare tire holder. Um, uh, also, like now, probably this is my second favorite feature of the truck. Yep. Okay, yeah, let's have yeah it's basically your gear things. garage now. It's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, all your, uh, it's amazing how much fits in that guy. Yeah. So we've sure. got all of our recovery gear up here. And uh, this actually fit a, a three-ton Pro Eagle, Pro Jack, Eagle yeah. Jack in there nicely. Yeah, easily. So, yeah, and then easily. Shovels, and everything fits in there. That's fantastic. Yeah, and the uh, the shelf does adjust up and down on the same style track that the boxes are mounted to underneath. So you can go ahead and kind of fit it to however you need. And again, powder coated to match, so it really ties in. Yeah. All right. And then right here, Pete, this is uh, that's our Midland, Midland radio Midland. antenna. antenna. Yeah, so little stubby guy. Yeah, little guy. We mounted to the jack bracket with a little a little bracket we made up here. Um, just to give you some comms, um, and uh, and then all this stuff right here is uh, this is like our water filling. Yep, thing. water fill. We got our sink drain. Uh, we got our dramatic furnace. Um, our gravity feed for the water tank. Shore power, right? Shore power, furnace exhausts, upper and lower fridge vent, um, which is nice. You can get a little bit of storage. You can't put anything that's not going to want to get hot in there, yeah, but it's still warm some in there, so. Um, Heat up your burritos or something exactly. like that. Exactly. <laughs> uh, exterior shower, which is nice. Just pop that open and then the shower wand pops in, goes from off to cold to hot. And we have our inside shower drain. Um, also have our exterior down lights, which are nice for some ambient light, kind of show you what's in your boxes at night. And we have our rear wall uh, solar plug. So if you have a mobile panel, um, you can plug in. Uh, Rob probably really won't need to. He's got plenty of solar and amp hours, but it's a nice feature to have. So um, we've got our, our side window here as well. And then we've got another side light here because um, we have the exterior lighting package from four wheel. But, uh, All right, Pete, so we just jumped in here real quick. Uh, tell me what we got going on in here. In here we have our S-Pod, which controls um, our light bar, front lights, air compressor, rear locker, front locker. 
Um, nice little setup, kind of, you know, gives you the ability to add on. Um, also gives you some Bluetooth control or some stuff while you're in the camper. Um, if you need to turn on your lights to see what that noise is, you can fire them all up. Um, we also have the Titan uh, control for the uh, aux tank down here to be able to transfer in, which is nice, down by my knee. Um, and we have our Midland radio back behind the cab. So that's all mounted there behind the, uh, the console and uh, ready to rock. But definitely a nice cabin in the new the new. I like ram. it a lot. It's pretty, the yeah. interiors are pretty incredible. It's so. like, um, it's very comfortable in here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, leaps and bounds over the old ones for sure. We also have the aux switches down here, which are really nice. We can tie in for, you know, that, that secondary control over the, uh, over the lighting. Yeah. So. All right, cool. Maybe let's uh, jump in the camper. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. All right, so yeah, we're in a four-wheel camper Hawk flatbed model. Um, and one of the best features of the flatbed models is the underbed storage here, which you can just lift up. It's on gas struts, and we have the reinforcement girders to be able to handle the extra weight of some storage, which is really nice for bedding or clothing or whatnot so a nice nice the feature amount there. Of storage in there is pretty impressive yeah very impressive we've got you know customers that keep again you know fishing rods that are broken down rifles whatnot for hunting or just general you know gear clothing whatnot in there as well so a nice feature for sure um, the bed also does slide out so we can go ahead and slide that guy right down and then we have space for these cushions to pop in um, and give us a little bit more space for sleeping. Um, otherwise, we have some nice features, including the electrical system we have in this particular camper. This is equipped with the Red Arc power management system, the Manager 30, um, which is really great. It's a kind of a step up charge um, for the lithium that this camper is equipped with. Um, it also does all of our solar control um, and just general battery management, shore power, etc. Um, really nice and tidy in this this little access port down here and uh, in here we can see maybe we can we can see our lithium batteries from Battleborn so this camper has 300 amp hours which is pretty wild um, 200 here in the stock location we'll, we'll show you where we put the other one in a moment um, we also have the uh, manager 30 display here which is really great it shows us um, a variety of things including percentage of charge how we're getting a charge right now we're inside vehicles not running and uh, so we're not getting solar shore power or vehicle power but these will charge up and, and show charging along the way if we were um, and we can go through and scroll through a number of other options um, Otherwise, this camper does not have the cassette toilet that would go here, but it does have a ton of storage in its place. Um, this lifts up and locks. Keep a bunch of uh, gear for breakfast or coffee in here. And um, again, down here, a ton of storage for other gear or a porta potty or something if you were to use it for that. And the, area. the option that we got was we did not get an indoor bathroom. And yep. so that's why we have that storage, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. And if you don't need it, like some, depending on where you're going, they can require it. But, you know, if you're going out west, you know, things are a little bit more uh, relaxed, so you can take advantage of that extra storage and you don't yeah. need that built-in system. And we got one of those, uh, was it clean waste toilet? Yeah. That's what they call it. Exactly. Which is good by a sporta yeah. potty tent and a clean nice waste and toilet. Simple. Yeah, keep it simple. Um, over here, we have our little, like, kitchenette, if you will. We have our uh, Dometic flush mount sink. Um, with faucet that pops up. Um, we have our Dometic flush mount stove, which is nice two burner here with an igniter. Um, we have our isotherm fridge. So we can go ahead and we have a little freezer as well if we want to make ice for the drinks. Um, hey, what size? Is that a 130, I think? I believe is this is a 130 and it's going to be a two-way. That's kind of what we recommend for most of our customers that are running on lithium or 12 volt. Um, way more efficient than a three-way. Um, a three-way on 12 volt is half as efficient as a two-way. So you can run it on propane, but you run into issues at altitude and stuff like that. Just a lot more maintenance. So these are a little bit more foolproof. Um, a bunch of storage as well under here for more uh, stuff for the kitchen. Um, we also have storage back here. Um, this is storage above 
our hot water heater, which is a five gallon unit. Um, and there's even a little bit more tucked down there as well. Um, so, you know, basically we have uh, 25 gallons roughly of onboard water, water, sorry, Philly water, uh, between, uh, between the hot water heater and um, the 20 gallon water tank that's just below this window. Um, we have our furnace exhaust, again from Dometic down here. Um, this is basically what's gonna warm up the camper. We can rotate this to direct the heat, which is nice. Um, up top, we have our, uh, our you know, awesome fans here. They're an upgraded model off of the old Fantastic fan. These are speed selectable, they have a remote, and they have a rain sensor. They're from Max Air, so they're a massive upgrade. Um, really cycles the air through. One to pull in, one to pull out. You can you can really lower that temperature like 15 to 20 degrees yeah, in the camper. Yeah, I was climbing around here earlier when it was a little hotter outside, and it was warm in here. I mean, yeah. you can turn that on, and like literally within a minute, it was just nice. It feels and cool. like air conditioning in here. Right Absolutely. Now. Yeah. yeah, and you do have the ability to open up some of the liner windows and get some some cross flow as well. Um, this camper does have the thermal pack, which is basically a um, a layer between the liner. Uh, and the interior of the camper really cuts down on condensation, keeps it warmer in the winter and cooler in the summer. So, um, and then we of course have our liner window, our acrylic window, followed by the screen here. And you can lower these just a little bit to kind of set the airflow, cross flow through the camper, which is nice. Um, apart from that, we've got our LED lighting with touch switches, which is great. Um, and we have our, uh, rear dinette with uh, an inside shower that we'll show right, you in a second. We'll switch around and we can see it. All right, so the rear dinette. Yep. Uh, what do we got going on here? So rear dinette, we've got a couple things happening. Um, we have our inside shower in the middle, um, which is great. That's the inside shower drain. Um, we have the uh, flap that up right here. Up. Yep. That's, That's how drain. we pop in to hook up to water. Um, there is like a cocooning shower curtain that would wrap around some hooks that are on the ceiling. Um, so you can, you know, direct that water in. Um, the rear dinette also turns into like a reasonably wide bed, you know, wider than maybe a single um, with the table dropping in and then the seat backs dropping down as well. Um, we have great storage under the, the dinette area as well. Um, if we lift up this one in particular, you're gonna go ahead and see a battery box that we installed for uh, another 100 amp hour lithium battery. Um, there's also a GoPower 2000 watt inverter in here for you guys to be able to crank out your work and plug in your, your computer um, and uh, get some work done. We also have the, um, we have the WeBoost that is plugged into this as well to give us some advanced signal there. But, uh, but yeah, and then a little bit further down on the dinette, we have some switches for kind of interior floor lights, which are these guys, similar to the down lights on the outside. Um, some of the exterior lights, flood lights, um, side lights, all that good stuff. We have uh, outlets here that will work when we're plugged into shore power, um, household outlets. We also have our dual USB uh, plugs and a 12 volt with a switch power here from Blue Sea. So some nice components, um, you know, not really skimping out on the, the electrics on this unit at all. Um, and of course the, the standard fire extinguisher. And then uh, right here above the door is our awning. Uh, what is this thing? Right, it's not a crank. Bracket. Yep, crank or crank. awning crank, yeah. okay. And uh, in the name of the awning is a what kind? Fiamma, yeah. Fiamma. F45, it's a great unit. All right, well let's uh, go out there and give it a crank, see how it yeah. works. All right, Pete, let me give this a try here. Let's there you see. Go. So this guy hooks in right there. Yep. And you kind of just turn it. Yep. And like this. There you go. Yeah, there like we an go. old school. Uh, All right. And that guy just kind crank. of cranks out. Yeah, it can crank out and hang. It's got kind of suspension arms, cable arms, which are really nice. Um, so you don't have to support it as it cranks out. And then when yeah. we get reasonably close, the arms will pop out, rotate down. And we can go ahead and set that height. Uh, right. Usually a good idea to have kind of like an angled um, awning to let that water shed, uh, but they, they can go quite high, you know, because we do have a, a pretty tall truck, so 
you're not going to hit your head and still get that door open. But the Fiamma is a great awning. Um, you know, it is mounted off the side here and riveted in. Um, aluminum case, uh, beautiful awnings. We've actually seen people um, hit them on telephone poles, pop the rivets, awning falls to the ground, but it's perfectly fine. You can pick it up and put it right back up there. So very robust and can, can take the, you know, the abuse. That's awesome. Hopefully I won't be running it into there you go. telephone poles. <laughs> there you go, exactly. Good stuff. Um, while we're on the side here, I guess we could talk a little bit about, you know, our sidewall steps, which pop out to give us access to the roof. Um, you know, because the four wheel camper has an aluminum framed roof with aluminum skin, we don't really like to walk on it, but we can get up right alongside of it to tie things down or, or clean off our solar panels or roof. Um, and then again, we have our down lights here um, and propane door here. So. In here we've got two 10 pound uh, Manchester style tanks here for propane. Um, basically hook up one and then swap it over to the other. Um, once that one's empty, you can get it refilled. Surprisingly efficient this set, you know, with the, the furnace in here, um, very cold temperatures, you know, you're only running through a little bit of a tank. So you don't need a ton of propane to keep this nicely insulated pop-up camper nice and yeah. toasty. In moderate temperatures, that's probably enough for... Just take that chill off, you're not yeah. going to use much at all. So, um, fully sealed propane box, so you're not going to have anything kind of drifting in to the camper. It is vented um, to meet code and all that. Um, and then we have battery vents here as well, just to kind of keep, uh, keep all that stuff cycling out that needs to. Um, we have side lights here, similar... So we can turn those on from inside the camper. Again, they angle down. Um, we've got our down lights, which are nice. And then we have side lights that you can turn on. And then a little porch light, you know, doesn't do a whole lot, but almost like a little bug light from four wheel. And that uh, has it done switch on it. Little right? rocker, yep, oh, absolutely. So, there you go. Get you that little, uh, that little amber now light. Now there's no more mosquitoes. There you go, we, we stopped them. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, so that's kind of the setup. I think we talked a little bit about the uh, the spare tire holder here. You know, you can accommodate up to a 40 inch if you ever needed to. Um, we got the water fill here for the Norwell um, integrated, I believe it's an 11 gallon tank uh, in between the frame rails. And then the spigot down here for that gravity drain for that same tank. So, you know, with that system, you have what, uh, 37 gallons roughly on board, which is, a good number for, for a little trip. Very impressive. This is the smooth aluminum finish as well. So this is a metallic charcoal um, with that classic black stripe from four wheel. Um, kind of the, the best looking option, in my opinion, best color combo with the black and gray. It really ties in with the truck. So i um, really happy with the color combo on this. Okay, so in all the excitement to get out the door, we forgot just a couple upgrades that we did. Um, under the front here, we did a PSC hydraulic steering upgrade, obviously for a little more steering stability. And we also did an AEV front diff cover. And then here in the rear, we have an AFE diff cover. All right, Pete. Well, thank you so much for the walk around. Just kind of telling us everything we've got going on here. I'm super excited about this. Like, if I jump up and down, maybe more <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, we're pumped, and we hope you enjoy it. And where, where are you heading? Uh, we're leaving here and moving back to our new home in Utah. Awesome. Um, so we've got a, about a week drive ahead of us. Yeah. I think we're going to hang out a little bit along the way and maybe park in Colorado before we head all the way back. Yeah. Yeah, we're running this thing around west, which is going to be perfect. It's going to eat it up out there. Absolutely, yeah. Nice full-size truck for big open trails. It's yeah, going to be great. Awesome. Well, thanks well, a lot, yeah, man. Absolutely. I super appreciate Safe you guys. Travels. All right, thank you. All right, so just a couple of footnotes here at the end of the video. Um, we did deviate. I don't know if you watched our build video or not when we were planning on how we were going to build this. Uh, but we deviated just a little bit. So where, where do we deviate? We didn't end up doing the 41 inch tires. We did 37s. Uh, that was because we could not get aftermarket gearing. So we're still on our stock gearing here and we'll have to wait. Uh, but after seeing the 37s, I think I'm just gonna stick with 37s. We still may re-gear this truck, but uh, I'm gonna stay on 37s. Uh, secondary, we did not do the rear winch. Uh, we were hoping to fit a 16.5K rear winch back there. And uh, it just, getting it to fit 
I think would have been possible, but it would have taken more time and we were already ready to pick up the truck in Pennsylvania. So that project's gonna be backburnered if we even end up doing it at all. Otherwise, I think those are the only places we deviated from the build plan. All right, another topic that I like to, to quickly tackle is, you know, when, we, when you build something like this, people always want to know what does it cost to build it. Uh, Money is a little bit of a touchy subject, so I like to try to steer clear of that if I can. But as I've been posting, you know, photos of this online in various groups and Instagram and so forth, you know, it's one of the questions I get most. What does it cost to build? So I'm going to just quickly kind of touch on that uh, just to give you an idea if you were to tackle something like this what would you be getting yourself into? So as I, you go, as you guys know, this is a 2021 Ram 3500 regular cab. Uh, we ordered this truck. Uh, we paid about $67,000 back of the napkin. Uh, I think that included my taxes in the state of Virginia where we purchased it. Uh, we also had to buy the camper and the tray. Uh, those were, I think, $73,000 between the tray and the camper. And then we had to do vehicle modifications. So, you know, the, the lift and the tires and the steering upgrades and, you know, all the various mods that you guys have seen in this video that's come together. Uh, plus the labor to have all that installed. And that was, you know, around $45,000, $50,000 additional. So back of the napkin, uh, you're probably in the neighborhood of about one ninety dollars to two hundred, dollars depending on what you do exactly uh, to replicate this build. So... Hopefully that gives you an idea of where it's at and, uh, you know, if you decide you want to do something like this. You can certainly go out and buy other expedition vehicles. I'm sure you guys all know the ones I'm talking about that are, you know, $300,000, dollars dollars $500,000. Um, I think in comparison to something like this, this is a pretty darn good bargain and we can sure take it a lot of places. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching and I hope you guys find this helpful and keep an eye out for future adventures we're going to have this thing on. Before we jump in the camper, this was also uh, something that was not standard on this truck. Yeah. These were, um, I think these are Midnight Edition badges, you guys. I was able to acquire them from uh, Ram and you guys put them on for me and they look perfect. Get rid of that chrome. There you go. So Pete, I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. And this is a question I want to know the answer to before I, you know, we started talking about buying one of these. Yeah. People always know what is the wind, like how much is the wind rating on these? And I read stories about people like riding out hurricanes. I don't think yeah. it's necessarily recommended. Yeah. But like it's got a pretty high like wind resistance. Absolutely, yeah. I mean we we hear stories, we don't recommend it, of people that have uh, hopped out of their camper, taken a phone call, gotten in the truck and uh, started driving down the highway. So you know, you'll get some beeping and whatnot, right around 60 or 70, you're gonna wanna pull over and, uh, and probably pop it down. Um, but we have had campers that have been out in some massive, massive winds. Um, you know, we ourselves have camped at the base of uh, Killington in Vermont, um, right at the, where they let you uh, camp in the upper snowshed lot. Um, the wind just whips up the hill, probably 60, 70, 80 miles an hour. Um, gets a little loud, but with the front shear wall, uh, lift panel up front and in the rear you can really take that wind as long as you park into the wind um, and with that furnace you know cranking at 70 the fridge has the beer cold you know you're still gonna have a great night <laughs>